we must go on. The next effect of the Word of God that I want to mention is what I call mental illumination. Uh, we could take many passages, but I'll just take one verse from Psalm 119. Psalm 119. You know that's the longest psalm, don't you know that? And every verse of that psalm contains some phrase that describes the Word of God. There are about eight different phrases, but there's not one verse in Psalm 119 that doesn't contain. Well, Psalm 119, verse 130, says this, and it's addressed to God. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Now this is talking about what the Word of God does in the area of our mind. It gives light and understanding. Now I was for five years principal of a college for training teachers for African schools in Kenya. And um, so I was confronted with this whole issue of how to educate people. And I continually pointed out to my students, you can have education, but be a fool. Education is not wisdom. I'm not against education, it's important, it's necessary. My comment to my students used to be, most of the trouble in the world is caused by educated fools. I think the more you ponder on that, the more you'll see how true it is. If they weren't educated, they wouldn't be able to cause so much trouble. There was an American president at the beginning of this century who was talking about people who steal things. And he said, if a man is not educated, he'll steal a railroad car, one car from a railroad. But if you educate the same man, he'll steal the whole railroad. <laughs> so education is not light. People, I know this because I was highly educated myself and in total darkness. I didn't know where I was coming from. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know how to find the right way in life. But when it came to taking exams and writing theses, I could succeed. I was educated, but in darkness. And that's the condition of multitudes of people. Educated, but fools. Educated, but they don't know how to make the right way through life. And you find there are as many educated people that end up in moral and mental and physical problems as there are uneducated people. A French writer once said, I don't know that this is necessarily to be followed, but he said, you find more old drunkards than you find old doctors. Uh, so the fact that a person has education in itself doesn't guarantee a good life or real success. The Word of God comes in as light. It shows us where we are. It shows us our real problems and it shows us the answers. You see, in the natural world there's no substitute for light. Nothing else in this world will do what light does. Again, I think of dealing with my students in Africa. I would try to impress this on them. So when we were in the lecture hall, I'd say, now if this hall were in total darkness, how would we get rid of the darkness? And then I'd wait a little and I'd say, maybe we should open all the doors and windows and let the wind blow the darkness out. And they said, no. So maybe I should send you to get some brooms and sweep the darkness out. And they'd say, of course not. So then I'd say, well, what do we do to get the darkness out? And some student will say, we switch on the light. That's right. Where light comes, darkness can no longer exist. And opening your heart and mind to the Word of God is switching on the light in your mind. It's getting to see who you are, the real nature of your problems. You see, I had been looking for 15 years at least 
for the real meaning of life. But education, as I had it, hadn't shown me. When the light of the Bible came in, I began to know, uh, I began to understand what really I needed, what would make life meaningful, successful. Uh, and it says in that verse that it gives understanding to the simple. The word simple is rather despised today, but I tell you there's a lot to be said for being simple. Don't be too complicated. Uh, if you're very complicated, you really never know whether you found the solution or not. See? But if you're simple, if you're basic, you say, well, I want happiness. I want love. I want to know the best way to live. Don't get too profound. I think of the philosophers I studied. I absolutely shudder when I think. The philosopher Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher, wrote sentences which took more than two pages before he came to a full stop. <laughs> the Bible's totally different, have you noticed that? It says the most tremendous things in the shortest words. I was, uh, in, when I was in Africa, I have to not dwell too long on this, when I was in Africa, I was invited to speak to an African congregation every morning for a week. I had to drive in the car way out. So one morning I decided to speak on 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Who is own self? 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Now in the old King James Version, which I was reading, it says, who his own self, speaking about Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live to righteousness. Well, to me, that's a most profound thought. It's the very center of the gospel. So as I was driving along, I began to say, most of the people I'm going to be speaking to are illiterate. They can't read or write. Maybe this message is too profound for them. And the Lord spoke to me by the Holy Spirit, and he said, take that verse and count the number of words of one syllable in that verse. So I did. There are 23 words in the verse, 19 words of one syllable, three words of two syllables, and one word of three syllables. And that is the most profound truth you can ever achieve, you see? But it's stated in simple language. If you become too complicated, you really don't know whether you're speaking the truth or not. You can fool yourself. But when you come down to simplicity, that's where you know what you're really dealing with. I recommend you to be simple when you come to God. Be honest. Lay your heart bare. Tell Him your real problems. Cover, cover nothing up. And then let the Word of God give you the understanding that you need. 